what do the following subsets of Euclidean space all have in common? So let's look at, for instance, um, the trefoil knot in, uh, in R3. And hopefully if I do this correct, um, it'll look somewhat decent. I believe this is how you can draw it. <laughs> so um, imagine you look at the trefoil knot. I tried to draw it so that there are no intersections. Um, and also, let's say, uh, just an open subset of R2. And let's say it looks something like an annulus. Uh, another example is, let's take the uh, sphere, the unit sphere in R3. Maybe we can also look at a paraboloid in R3. Or something that we looked at before briefly was a donut, also known as a torus. And so on. We can come up with a couple of more examples if we wanted to, and we will in a few moments. So what do all of these subsets of Rn have in common? Well, for one, around any single point that we choose, these locally look like some Euclidean space. And what exactly do I mean by locally look like? We should recall a definition that says that for any two open subsets, V and U of R let's say are M, U and V are diffeomorphic if and only if, and this is a definition, there exists two functions between V and U. Such that phi and psi are differentiable. And we can also make sense of this by replacing the word differentiable with of class CR, for instance. Continuously differentiable or higher order continuously differentiable. And are differentiable and are inverses of each other. So this is what it means for two open subsets of Rn to be differentiable. And what we notice here in a lot of these pictures is that around any point, we can find an open neighborhood, let's say in this larger Euclidean space, intersect it with this image, and then we notice that we get uh, something that looks like, which means is diffeomorphic to an open subset of perhaps some Euclidean space of maybe a lower dimension. In this first example, we see that around any point, it looks locally like a line. So we should be able to find some open set in R3 here, which is a ball, and in, for instance, and intersect it with this curve. And we should be able to map that diffeomorphically to some open subset of the real line. Here, around any point, we can find, because this is by definition an open subset of R2, we can just choose the diffeomorphism to be itself. Um, because it's already an open subset of R2. On the sphere, we can take a little patch of this sphere, an open neighborhood around that, so that would be a three ball intersecting this sphere, and we would be able to find a diffeomorphism from that open set intersecting with this subset, the sphere, with an open subset of R2, and so on for a lot of these other different kinds of surfaces, curves, and so on it would be difficult for me to draw something higher dimensional. So all of these examples lead to the following definition for what a manifold is. So a subset M 
in some Euclidean space, let's say RK, is an m-dimensional manifold if and only if for any point in that space, so let's say in this picture we have the point C, if and only if for every point C in my subset M, so if and only if for all C in M, there exists two open sets. One open set in RK, which is going to intersect with our surface, and another set open subset also of RK, but this time it's going to intersect a very special surface. There exist open sets U and V, both in RK, and a diffeomorphism between U and V. And let's try to use the same notation we have here. So U and V, such that. And what we want to do is we want to relate this surface to something more familiar. For, for instance, a plane. So we want a diffeomorphism satisfying the condition that, um, first of all, C has to be in U. That's the first condition we need. Secondly, if we take the image of our open set here, so phi of u, and then we intersect it with m, then this will be a subset of r m cross 0, where r m cross 0, in this picture, r m is going to here be the plane. So we're going to assume that m is less than k, so that less than or equal to k, so that this definition makes sense. It's going to be a subset of the plane right here. And in fact, it's going to, so it's going to be a subset in this sense, but it'll actually equal this set when we intersect with k. <clears throat> so what we have here in this picture is if we want to show that something like this is a manifold, we would have to construct this open ball here. And then we would look at the plane. I'm trying to redraw it without cluttering the picture. That open, intersect, that, in, that open set intersected with the surface is going to trace out some two-dimensional object here. And then maybe the open set might you know, look sort of extended out in this direction, something like that. And so that's the definition of a manifold, using our intuition how something locally looks like a smaller dimensional flat plane around every single point.